So many of the vegetables we eat and the flowers we love come from seed. So today, we're going to talk about the importance of seed and how to use them in your garden. Starts right after this. I'm Alan Smith. Welcome to the show. You know, today we're going to talk about seeds, and ever since I was a little kid, I've been fascinated by them. It's just amazing to me that something like this, an inert object, is so full of life, so much potential here, you just have to get the conditions right. It's amazing to me that you can take a handful of seed and have beautiful wildflowers in a meadow, or you can just place a few in a container, grow your own sweet peas or your favorite variety of nasturtium. And then there's vegetables. You can plant an entire vegetable garden with just seed and the bounty, well, it's endless. Now today, we're gonna to travel to Alabama to speak with my friends at the Bonnie Plant Farm. You won't believe how many seeds they use a year or in just one day. Also, I'll show you how easy it is to start your own seeds indoors. Plus, we'll answer of your question about, you guessed it, seeds. And a little later, a delicious way to enjoy okra well into the fall and winter and next spring. All this and more right after the break. Bonnie Plant Farm in Union Springs, Alabama was started by Livingston and Bonnie Polk in 1918. They began their whole business with just two pounds of cabbage seeds and they planted them in their backyard. After selling every last plant in town, they saw more potential and just kept growing. Today, Bonnie is the predominant supplier of vegetables and herbs across the nation. While visiting their farm, I had an interesting conversation with Lamar Roten, who's their production manager, about how many seeds they get planted in their facility each day. And believe me, the number is staggering. Lamar, what's going on over here? Well, what we're doing right here is uh, we have some early girl bush tomatoes seed we're planting. And uh, hopefully in about six or seven weeks, we'll have these ready to go in someone's garden. That's wonderful. So in each one of these little cells, one seed drops in there. That's correct, one seed. And these are 105, so there should be 105 tomato plants in there when we get done. How many of these flats or tomatoes can you run through here in a day? We have two of these machines. We can do 5,000 flats per machine per day. That's a lot of tomatoes. That is a lot of tomatoes, my goodness. Walk me through the process. How does a tomato go from a tiny little seed to something I'm gonna plant in my garden? Okay, well, once we get them in these trays, we'll put them on the rack here, roll them in our germ room, Tomatoes will stay in our germ room for three days. Temperature is around 70 degrees, humidity is around 90%. After three days, we get them out and they should be cracking the seed coat good. Then we'll take them to our plug houses and they'll stay in there ranging anywhere from three to five weeks. Okay, so the germ room is short for germination. Germination. Yeah, and you're just really wanting that, that, that plant to begin to just break through that outer coat. Right, just, yeah. we don't want it coming out of the soil very much until we get it in the greenhouse. Right, and, and then that's, that plant senses the sun and, and up it comes. Yeah, it's unbelievably fast at some time. Right here on this water tunnel, we don't add any fertilizer in here at this point, but the soil that we're planting them in come with a starter charge that allow them to get started. Once they're in our plug houses, we're on a low rate constant feed program until they leave our houses to be transplanted. So, so virtually every time they're watered, they're getting a low dose of food. Low dose of fertilizer. Now, tell me a little bit about the seed because I know you guys produce a, a wide range of tomato plants. All of them start from seed, but what goes on before the seed actually makes contact with the soil? First of all, we try to pick reputable companies to get our seed from. They come from all over the world. We get them from Central South America, Southeast Asia, and uh, we use primarily hybrid seed. What do you have here? Is this early? These girl? are the early girl bush that we have here. Oh, that's a good performer. Right, I've real good. That one, yeah. Good patio tomato. They'll stay kind of stocky. You could put them in a pot on a patio, and they won't fall over and give you a lot of trouble that way. This is where it all starts, right here, and uh, you're doing a great job. Well, we try. Yeah, we'll keep up the good work. All right. Thank you so much. 
After the break, we'll plant some more seeds and check out this basic recipe for pickled okra. You know, I like to plant all kinds of seed. And one of the things that's important to me is to keep them organized. As I mentioned earlier, I like to organize them by when I plant them. So I've grouped these together. Now this is a great time of year, late summer, early fall, to plant wildflowers. So I'm pulling out some poppy seeds, some annual larkspur, and some other things that I can mix together and I can sow. We have such beautiful wildflowers at the Garden Home Retreat, so I'm just going to add some as I do every year. You see, I just direct sow these. Just as long as they make that seed to soil contact, they're going to do fine. Now, if you don't have time to plant seeds outdoors or indoors, my friend Tom Smith with Proven Winners shows us an easy way to put together some handsome combinations that are both easy and big time savers. Today we're going to talk about a new product called Pop, Drop and Grow. This is a great new concept designed from a landscaper's request based on the fact that he was tired of planting all the small individual plants by hand. He wanted to plant the plants like sod. So this is a brand new container made up of 100% recycled paper product. So it can be used in a mulch pile at the end of the season or actually even rototilled into the beds after the landscaping season is done. You can see this would be a product that you'd buy. Here's an individual Rocapoco container that's been planted up into that container, or container of your choice. Also, this super tuna here, you can see how much it's trailed down over the container. And how this process works is not only can you buy it as an individual monoculture and landscape, but you're going to be able to find a lot of these in the Spring Garden Center this year, already made up in combinations with the thrillers, made up with the fillers and the spillers to create that combination. And it will be as easy as buying this just like you see it. All you have to do is hold the container down nice, firmly, and level. Pull this tab, it opens up to 100% unrestricted root growth at the bottom, so there's nothing to grow through. And literally, you just take that and drop that into the container of your choice, and you can see how that makes nice contact with that soil below. It's really important that you fill that container with good quality soil, because that soil is the foundation of the plant. And if you notice, that root system 100% made contact with that soil below. So again, dropping it, making contact with that soil, and it's gonna take that whole foundation and grow that container over with all its beautiful plants. Coming up, it's a delicious way to enjoy okra well into the fall and winter and next spring. And right after the break, I'll answer viewer mail that could help you save money in the garden. So don't go away. It's always fun for me to get involved in organizing my seeds. Sometimes I don't feel like a very organized person, but when it comes to sorting these out based on the time of year, I kind of enjoy it. So what I'm doing now is I'm sorting out seed that I can plant now that will carry me through the end of the growing season. I started these tomatoes, and I know it's close. They may not make their full crop, but I can't resist. These are Juliet's, and they'll produce fruit in 50 days, 50 to 60 days. And I've had these in the greenhouse and you can see they're nice, beautiful little plants. And what I like to do is brush my hand over the top of them. It just sort of strengthens them. And these are about three to four weeks old. So I'll get those planted probably tomorrow. But I'm also choosing some things like turnips, uh, carrots, beets, um, as well as some of these evergreen bunching onions. All of these things I can plant in the fall. So I'm gathering these to get them in the ground to take advantage of these last few days of the growing season. That wasn't too long ago, I was doing just the reverse. I was getting a jump start on the spring and I was involved in planting some lettuce in the greenhouse. This time of year, I love to get as many seedlings going as I possibly can. And what I'm planting today is lettuce. In fact, I'm planting some of this oak leaf lettuce. This variety is called Granada. Now, if you know me, you know I love all kinds of salad greens and they're perfect for growing this time of year. Just look at this gorgeous flat of butter crunch lettuce I started about three weeks ago. Isn't the color fantastic? You see, when you grow these things from seed, you have a lot of choice in terms of the varieties that you can trial. 
any given year, I might grow 16 varieties of lettuce. And I might not be able to find those at my local garden center, so I start them in the greenhouse just as I am here. Now you wanna make sure you use a soil that is specifically blended for seeding and for potting up young seedlings. And what I'm about to do here is fill up all of these peat pots, and then I will come along and add two seed to each one of these pots of this wonderful dark red lettuce. The combination in the garden, well, it's gonna look like a big salad bowl. Since today's show is all about seed, I thought it was appropriate to pull a viewer a question that's about the same topic. Now our viewer Suzanne writes, Alan, I have quite a few seed packs of seed left over, and I didn't get them planted this summer, so may I save them for next year? Well, actually, Suzanne, you can. And let me give you a couple of tips. What I like to do is try to organize this time of year my seed packs. As you can see here, I found this plastic tray that allows me to sort them, which is much better than putting them in a plastic bag like this. But if that's what you have, that works. The idea is just pop them in the freezer because that will hold them until next year. You wanna keep them dry and very cold. Next spring, you may say, well, I'm not sure if these seed are viable or not. One way to check it is just to take the seed and place them in a tray like this with a paper towel. And then you can take some water and just moisten them like that. Lay the towel over the top, moisten that, and keep this moist and check them every few days and you'll begin to see how viable they are because the ones that are viable will begin to germinate. That will give you an idea of what percentage in the seed pack you have that will actually germinate in your garden or in your greenhouse. So give that a try. Now after the break, we're actually going to make some pickled okra, so stay tuned. It's hard to believe how many vegetables are coming out of that vegetable garden just now. It seems like the hotter it gets, some of the vegetables perform better than others, and nothing likes it hotter than okra. Now, what we're doing today is we're actually going to make some pickled okra. I'm canning it. It's a delicious way to enjoy okra well into the fall and winter and next spring. Now, okra is very easy to grow. The plants are beautiful. They have big yellow flowers on them, and it's actually the seed pod that we eat. Now today, I'm gonna to show you a really basic recipe for pickled okra. It takes just a few ingredients. What you wanna start with is about three and a half to four pounds of fresh okra. The smaller the pods, the better. You'll want to have some vinegar on hand. Now what I'm gonna to add to the seven cups of vinegar will be one third cup of pickling salt. And once it begins to boil, and we'll be ready to pour it into the jars. What I do is I take the pint jars and I take just a few cloves of garlic, but I drop a few of those in the bottom. I take a couple of pieces of this pepper, and then I begin to pack in the okra, again, layering them in there. Now, what I do is I pack about 35 to 36 pods. What you wanna do is you wanna bring the pods, the pepper and the garlic up to the bottom rim here of the jar, okay? Now one other little spice you can add to this, I like to take a little fresh dill, actually some of the leaves of dill, and just place them on top, and I push those down, and I think we're ready. Now just for safety's sake, what I like to do is take my jar and place it like this, and I just simply take the vinegar mixture that's boiling, and I just pour it over the top of the okra. I want to bring it up to about a quarter of an inch the top of the jar. You want to make sure that all of the stems are covered. Okay, next I want to get my pot holder here and I'm going to place the lid on it like this. And the next step will be to place it in this hot bath. You just want to make sure that you've got enough water that comes up over the top of the lid and you'll want this to boil for 15 minutes. Now, okra is very easy to grow. Like I said, it requires a lot of heat. If you will soak your seed overnight in milk, uh, buttermilk's even better, or just water, you'll find that the germination of the seed will be enhanced, uh, which is a wonderful thing. Once you sow the okra seed, what you will find is that it will germinate within about six to seven days 
and it will actually be ready to harvest in about 53 days, which is quite remarkable. Now you can see our three cans are now completely covered. Now while these are in the hot bath, what I'm gonna do is be getting the next series of jars ready. And it's just amazing how many jars of okra or canned goods you can create once you get the process set up. If you've ever grown okra, you know that you have to be out there and cut it almost every day. It grows so rapidly and it's such an abundant and generous plant. Now, what I'll do after 15 minutes, I'll take these out and set them aside with some tongs as they cool down, you'll want to hear that jar lid pop, and that means that it's drawn down, and it's tightened, and it's sealed, and it will last. As you can see, once you get set up with a process like this, you can produce lots of jars of canned goods in a short period of time. Plenty to eat yourself and share with your friends. Now, I better get back to work. You need to really try that recipe, it is so good. Now one last thing on organizing seed, what I like to do is take a month by month folder like this and place the seed in there as a reminder of the month I need to plant them. It's very handy this way. So I'm making sure that I've got all these placed in the right folder, which will make the planting season much easier. Well, that's all the time we have for today's show. I hope you've enjoyed being together as much as I have. You know, anything that you've seen in today's show, particularly that recipe, you can find on my website. That's pallensmith.com. Until next time, from the garden, I'm Alan Smith. In this garden I dream of a bed of flowers Bluebirds sing of the beauty all around us And every time the sun comes out I can't help but smile Oh, no, I can't help but smile